right guys, hope you're all well today. So another episode of Film Chat. I picked up a few Blu-rays the past couple of months, so I wanted to sit down and have a talk with you guys, show you what I've been buying and uh, give my opinions. So here we go. First off, we have The Hunger Games. Now, this is a film that I wasn't particularly looking forward to watching. I'll be honest with you, the trailers and that didn't really do it for me. And so when it was on Channel 4 last year, I just randomly recorded it, thinking that I might get around to watching it eventually. Never did, and then Christmas rolled around, I didn't have anything to watch, so I thought, why not give it a shot? And I'm so glad I did, because to be quite honest with you, The Hunger Games was not what I expected at all. I thought it was going to be like a teen angst kind of drama, and I thought, I'm not really in the mood for that today. But it was actually a really fun film with lots of great action, good drama, excellent and told story, brilliant acting. Um, yeah, really, really fun film. I was really surprised by it, and did not expect it at all. And so the following day, I was doing some Christmas shopping, and I had to go to Smith's and I picked up Catching Fire, the sequel. Uh, I was really like hyped. I wanted, I wanted to get this. I didn't want to wait for it to be delivered. And it was Christmas time. So I thought if I ordered it from Amazon, it's going to take a bit longer. It might not get here on time. And I just wanted to watch the sequel and find out what happens next. So I paid over the odds for it in the shop. But it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I prefer Catching Fire. I thought it was a much better film than the first one. First one's great. Don't get me wrong. But the second one, definitely much better in my opinion. I really want to see Mockingjay Part 1, but unfortunately I didn't get to see it at the cinema. And the way this ends, you need to see the next film because it's, it leaves you right on a hanger. And I was like, oh, damn it. So, yeah, Mockingjay is coming out in March. I just got an update from Amazon because I've got it on order. So I'm really looking forward to picking that one up and watching that on Blu-ray. Uh, but, yeah, highly recommend it. If you've never seen Hunger Games, you just never really piqued your interest, do yourself a favour and give it a try because it really is a surprisingly fun film, uh, both of them. So next up, we... Recently, I, told, I might have told you in a couple of videos back that I sold my Blu-ray player, which was Region 3 DVD. And that was just to make some space for my entertainment unit because I didn't have any room left. So I went through all my DVDs, had a good cut of the collection, got rid of all the Region 1 American DVDs and some of the Region 2 stuff that I wasn't interested in keeping because I just didn't watch them. And so some of the American stuff, I wanted to get back on UK Region 2 because they were things that I actually enjoyed, but I wouldn't be able to play them without the player. So I, I previously in the previous video I did show you I picked up the Alias box set which was awesome. So recently I picked up the ult, ult, ultimate director's cut of The Warriors. Uh, fantastic classic movie, seventies. I uh, watched it again and it's still brilliant, still great. If you've never seen it, the basic plot is that all the gangs in New York come together for a central meeting, and the main leader I believe of the the biggest gang called Cyrus wants all the gangs to join together so that they're not fighting over petty bits of land and they can all come together and rule the whole of New York together. Unfortunately, one gang doesn't want that to happen, so they shoot Cyrus dead and they blame the Warriors. And then it's a story basically about the Warriors trying to get back to Coney Island, their home turf, and to try and survive. And there's a radio station that gives out messages to all the gangs so they know the Warriors are the ones to blame and they're all trying to get the Warriors. And the Warriors have to go through each of the different turfs and fight different gangs. It's really, really cool. And a particular gang, and all, I can't remember what the name of the gang is, but... They all wear baseball outfits, they've got makeup and they've got baseball bats and they just look really cool. They actually hold up really well considering it's the 70s, I'm surprised. Um, it's just a really, really fun film and I highly recommend it if you've never seen this one. So next up I picked up something I should have picked up a hell of a long time ago, just for some reason kept putting it off. It is Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles Season 2. Uh, I did go back and watch Season 1 before watching this, which I've also got, because I wanted to make sure I could remember the storyline. Um, this show is absolutely brilliant. It's such a shame that it's got cancelled. I was gutted at the time when it happened. And going back and watching it now, it was so well done. And there's a lot of nice homages to the original Jim Cameron movies as well, which I thought was really cool. And I've got to say, Summer Glow as Cameron, without a doubt, one of her best performances ever. She was absolutely fantastic. Plays a brilliant Terminator. Uh, Lena Headey as well as Sarah Connor. And I believe it's Thomas Decker who's playing John Connor. And they've got Brian Austin Green who plays the brother of Carl Reese, um, really, really well thought out. You can see that a lot of love running into this and that they appreciated the original material and they didn't just make a standalone show. It's absolutely fantastic. I really recommend this guy. If you've never seen the Sarah Connor Chronicles, you owe it to yourself to watch them. Unfortunately, the way season two ends, because the season was cancelled, the show was cancelled, uh, it does leave it on a cliffhanger, which is a shame because the storyline could have been really interesting where they were going with it. But, you know, it is what it is. We got what we got and just have to be grateful that we got this because it was just so well made. Now, I have read that with a new Terminator Genesis movie coming out and the possibility of a trilogy of movies, obviously depending on whether Genesis sells well or not, uh, if it gets enough revenue, um, 
then how am I making a TV show which is going to intertwine with the Genesis universe? Now, that's going to be hard because you've got to hope the film's actually any good. The trailer is okay. It looked good to me, got me interested for more. There's a new trailer coming February 1st, by the way, so I'll be looking out for that. But I'll wait and see when the film comes out. The TV show has got a lot to live up to, I reckon, because that Sarah Connor Chronicles was so well done. Although with the new one, it will be a completely new timeline from what I can see from the trailer for the film. So maybe it might be okay. I don't know. We'll wait and see. I won't hold reserve judgment. But yeah, the Sarah Connor Chronicles was an ex exceptional TV show. Uh, really did not deserve to get cancelled at all. So the next one I got was a Christmas gift, which was Arrow season two. We rate that best TV show at the moment. Uh, the, I watch a lot of American TV and as much as I like a lot of shows, none of them are compared to this. This is the best show consistently week on week. I've not seen a bad episode yet. I mean, people can debate on the quality of the episodes. Me personally, there hasn't been an episode of this show that I've disliked. And we're in season three now, we're quite far into it. And I'm absolutely loving that. Season four has been um, renewed as well, so that's coming. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Season two was fantastic. Summer Glow's in this as well. I love Summer Glow, so always a bonus. And it's just brilliant. If you've never seen it, recommend it. Honestly, go and watch it. It's fantastic. Whether you're into comic book characters or not, just give it a try. I, I don't read comics and I know nothing about comic book characters. And I absolutely love this show. It's full of action, drama, suspense, beautiful choreography, uh, great characters. It's just absolutely superb. Next one I picked up. I had to get this essential, one of my favourite shows of all time, 24 Live Another Day. So this is season 9, which they did in London in 2014. Uh, absolutely fantastic, as always. It was just like catching up with old friends. It's really weird. It's been a few years since season 8 ended and the whole show was canned. They came back with this one and it really was just like meeting up with old friends. It was just like I'd never been away. It was really weird. Like you had like a six month break and we got a new season. Absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Uh, this one's based around like a WikiLeaks situation combined with drone strikes and the whole you know, um, commentary on whether drones are correct or not, it's the right way to conduct warfare. Uh, really, really interesting season. And it also, the story at the end, once that part of the story is done with, being 24, they go on to a different storyline and an old character comes back, an old adversary of Jack's, and it gets a bit brutal, but it's really cool. Um, there is talk of season 10, they're trying to get that sorted. And there's also talk of the film, but they're always talking about the movie. So I hope to God season 10 does come out because I really want another season, especially the way it's ended as well. It deserves another season. And it was just, just as brilliant as every other season they've ever done. It's fantastic. Uh, also, if you've not seen the Blu-ray as well, or the DVD, I assume it's on that as well. There is an extra one here about Tony Almeida. Well worth watching it if you're a fan of the show because that if that's where they're going with the show, then hell, they need to get a season 10 because that would be absolutely brilliant. The only criticism I had with this season, one very minor thing was for me personally, was dialogue. They were in London. And they were using a mixture of American and English, and I thought it didn't make sense to me. I thought you've got American people, agents, in, them, in the UK. Now, you either choose to keep them talking American, or you, you give them English words. You know, you don't do a mix of both, because there's a scene where Jack has to track down the terrorist suspect, and she's in a pub. And he, he calls Chloe on the comms, and him and Chloe must say about six or eight times in one conversation the word pub which sounds really weird anyway when you hear Americans say it because it's not natural. I expect them to call it a bar or something, not a bloody pub. But, you know, it's a nice touch. But then the CTU unit that's based in London, they're all Americans and they refer to a council estate as a housing project. And to me, that was just really jarring and took me out the moment. It's like you either have pub, council estate or bar, housing project. Don't mix the two types of dialogue. It just sounds weird. And it probably is just me, but it was really irritating. If you did imitate you, please let me know, because I'd like to know I'm not alone. But <laughs> that's the only criticism. The show's absolutely brilliant. It's full of action. Jack Bauer's awesome. It kills a shitload of people. And it's just an absolutely fantastic show, and it just continues to be as great as it ever was. And the last one I picked up, pretty much essential, season nine of Supernatural. Second greatest show on the planet at the moment, because um, Arrow is number one. I was going to say Flash, and it really isn't. Uh, no, love Supernatural. I've been watching it since the beginning. Fantastic show. We're on to season 10 at the moment and they've just renewed it for season 11 so it just keeps on rolling which is absolutely brilliant. Season 9 was excellent, really enjoyed it. The only criticism I had was I wasn't too keen on the episodes with whether they were based around Crowley or Metatron and the, the cold gods, angels falling to earth. It didn't really work for me as well. I mean it's watchable, it's enjoyable because it's supernatural, it always is. You've always got the dynamic between the Winchester brothers which makes it fun to watch anyway. 
But me personally, I'm more of a supernatural monster of the week guy. I much prefer it when they're just going to a town, investigating a case and just trying to find the monster, figure out what the monster is and trying to kill it. And then you have the subplot of the, the, the troubles between the two brothers and all the other demons and angels thing. It's not just about the demons and angels because I find that kind of boring. But um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to criticise Supernatural. It's such a brilliantly well-made well show with you know great characters and it's really funny, um, self-aware and it's just absolutely superb. So yeah, if you've never seen Supernatural, get on it because it's the best shows out, one of the best shows out there. Definitely worth watching. Um, I have to get it from America. Unfortunately, for some reason, there wasn't a UK release when I ordered this. I don't know if it has been seen since, but yeah, quite annoying. I don't know why that is. Um, unless this hasn't been shown in the UK, I don't know. Maybe that's the reason it could be. But I'm pretty sure that Supernatural does get shown over here. Um, yeah, the interesting thing was, I went to look for a decent price on this. The best I could find was eBay, which is £33, imported from America. Standard delivery, which is about a week, week and a half. So I had a look around, and I looked at American Amazon, Amazon.com. They had this for $20, which worked out at the time about £12.50, bargain. Because normally in the UK, you're looking at about 30, 35 quid for a box set when they come out. So I was happy with that, you know, 12 and a half quid. Uh, looked at the shipping. Now, normally the standard shipping, I don't bother with Amazon.com because of their standard shipping. For some reason, even though they use USPS like all Americans do, a normal American can send me a parcel. It takes a week to a week and a half. Amazon send a parcel. It can take anything up to a month. It takes forever. I don't understand why. So I looked at the prices and the priority shipping, the most expensive one, worked out at 19 quid. Um, no, 16 quid, sorry, 16 quid. So it came in at just under 30 quid, cheaper than the eBay seller. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to take a punt on that. It's priority shipping, it's fast, why not? Ordered it on Sunday. I got an email on Monday to say it's been dispatched and it arrived on Wednesday. That is unbelievable. Two days from America. Bl bloody mind blowing. I was just absolutely shocked when it arrived. I didn't realise what it was at first. I thought, no, it can't be. I opened it up and there it was. I was like, wow. So yeah, awesome Amazon, quality company. <laughs> There you go, Supernatural Season 9, absolutely brilliant. Go watch it if you've never seen Supernatural. Fantastic show. So there you go, guys, that's what I've been watching. I have picked up some more Blu-rays recently, which I've not watched yet. So once I've watched all of those, obviously I'll make a new video, talk about them, give my thoughts and opinions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next video.